Hello, and welcome back to the homestead. Uh, so I'm trying to make an effort to be in the videos more because, I mean, it's, it's usually easier to describe something when I can just hold the camera and point at stuff, and all I see is my very expressive hand. But I know it's a lot more interesting when you actually see the person, so I'm trying to do more of those videos. They're also, they're also videos that people click on and watch for far more often, obviously because of my beautiful face and everything else. Um, but, you know, it's good. To, I think it's good to put a face on the camera too. So it's like, I'm a human being and this is me doing things. I'm not just some like robot that's pointing at things and I don't know what narrating. <laughs> so I try to, I'm going to try to be in the videos more. So um, any video that makes sense to do it. And this is a video that does make sense because I'm talking about a few different things all surrounding this godforsaken cesspool behind me and the deck that it's attached to. Now, for those who have not been around the channel a long time, the history is I fracking hate this pool. <laughs> so it, we spent a lot of money getting this thing going the first year we were here because we are like, yay, an in-ground pool. And like barely anyone swam in it. I swam in it more than anyone else. And I hate swimming. <laughs> I hate pools. I say they're, they're the, the bastard child of combining a money pit with a death trap um, because they're just awful. <laughs> so anyway, I haven't liked it. We ended up draining it, and then we found that there was a bunch of tears in the liner anyway. So despite all the work, that, all the money we paid to get it functional, like the stupid professional pool people didn't even notice the gigantic rips in the thing, which only got worse when I drained it, admittedly, but still, because the pressure wasn't there to, like, I don't know, maintain the rips at a reasonable size. But there was also issues with the plumbing and everything else, and it was, it was so expensive. And then I spent a lot more money trying to replace parts myself that they should have really should have done, but they would have charged me like a thousand times as much anyway, so probably it's best. Anyway, I'm not here too much to talk about my frustration with pools, only to say that this has remained more or less empty. It's filled up with rain, water, and turned into a frog pond, which I need to do something about. But I... I'm tired of it. I want to do something cool with it. So I'm going to turn it into an, I guess you'd say, in-ground greenhouse, underground greenhouse, a wallapini. I don't know what you'd call it, but I'm going to, I'm working right now to figure out how I'm going to put the arches across and put plastic. I'm going to keep a pretty basic design. If I like it and we know we're not going to want this pool in the future, like absolutely know we're not going to take, make the investment to like make it true again. I'm probably going to build a better structure, like actually build like a greenhouse structure all around it. So that should be pretty interesting, but that isn't quite yet. But before I get to that, I need to get to this. So over here is, is our attempt <laughs> at staining the deck. So I liked this color. I thought it was pretty cool. This is semi-transparent. Um, it's a Bordeaux color, so it's like a wine color. And it goes on like neon purple. So I was kind of nervous. But once it dries out, it looks pretty good. And I didn't want anything. I wanted something that has a little, it was a fun color, but still looked a little classy because I didn't want to make it, I mean, it's going to fit with a 250-year-old brick house. So, you know, it's going to have some kind of like class to it. So I like it. Um, probably a solid stain would have been better than the semi-trans because this, I don't know when this deck was built, but it, um, it has a lot of deep weathering. So there's a lot of deep cracks. So it's only, this is only one, it's not a bad color. Um, that's only one coat though, I should probably do two. But that took like five gallons and it was expensive stuff. So that was like $120 for that five gallons and I'm at to buy like, I don't know, five more gallons at least just to get one coat on everything. So I'm going to do all the railing, including the railing, extra railing that I built last year. And I need to get everything painted, not only to protect, protect the deck and keep it, you know, keep it going a little bit longer, um, but I'm also going to be growing things up the railing, like grapes and stuff. I don't want to attach trellises and I kind of really need to get everything painted before I start doing that. Um, same thing with the hardy kiwis and eventually the may pops. So yeah, so I'm in the process of doing this. But once I get this stained, I'm also going to start ripping out some of the boards I just stained to figure out how I'm going to attach the, the arches to the deck for the, the, the greenhouse. Um, and then I get it once I get the cover on and no more uh, rainwater is going in, I need to now figure out what I'm going to do inside that greenhouse because 
most of the length is like uh, an incline or decline. And um, I don't know how I'm going to grow on that because it's sort of like decline is facing the north side. So it's not even like I could put like plants down diagonally. I might have to build like plateaus. I gotta do something crazy in there. Probably the first year I'm literally just going to start build, I'm just gonna grow, where is it, right there. Kind of in the shallow end. And maybe I'll put like a ladder or something down to the deep end to put trees, potted trees. I, re I really don't know. The first year is gonna be experimental. But I wanted to mention on this video that, and I'll keep you updated about that progress. It's, uh, it's a whole thing. I really need to, I need to go buy more stain and get all this staining done before I do too much more. But I, I did want to say that I think I'm going to get back into aquaponics once that, once that um, greenhouse is in place. Because I really miss doing aquaponics. And I watch a lot of people who do aquaponics. And aquaponics is actually the reason why I first started spending time on YouTube, watching videos and, and contributing. Um, but oddly enough, I stopped doing aquaponics at my last house and I didn't start recording and vlogging until I got to this house and on the actual homestead. So I've never done an aquaponics video on here, which is really sad because it was a lot of fun and I was pretty good at it. Like I had really good basic systems. I, my favorite system was a rail system where I took vinyl post covers, those square ones, drilled holes, put plants in, and then ran water through them. Super duper successful. I love that system. I grew gigantic pepper plants in there. But I'm probably gonna set up at least a, an experimental little one just so I can get back into aquaponics so I can start talking about aquaponics again because it's something I was pretty passionate about but I never really got you know I never had a chance to share it with you like there's video I mean there's pictures out there somewhere on the internet about it but in terms of this vlog I've never had the chance to do that so I think I'm going to get back into that with maybe the possibility of that's the future of this like maybe I'll have some like tropical-ish type trees or trees that can't handle being unprotected in our very cold climate zone five ish but um you know I, I imagine just having like a gigantic aquaponic system in there and growing tons of greens um, because that's not something i really like to grow in my gardens like my annual garden i find greens kind of like eh, to grow it's just growing in a normal garden but i love growing them in aquaponics because it's just made for aquaponics because you know they grow quickly you can just keep them in there soaking up nutrients while you like you know cut and come again as they say you harvest a little bit and let them regrow and it's just so perfect for aquaponics. And um, it will also be great during the winter because it's still gonna be, we get pretty cold here. So it's gonna get cold in that greenhouse. You know, if I commit to this being a greenhouse, maybe I'll like, I don't know, paint something black or do something crazy in terms of uh, retaining heat. But for, for the beginning, it's not gonna be heated. It's just gonna be as it is. So I'm going to have to grow pretty cold tolerant plants in there. Cause you know, if I'm lucky, I can keep it above freezing <laughs> so we'll see um but yeah so that's really all i wanted to talk about just staining the deck otherwise getting the deck fixed up then tearing it apart a little bit to build a greenhouse the homes of aquaponics so i could finally get back into that so that's all i had to talk about so thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey